Welcome back to the Two Wheeled Rider YouTube channel. My name is Mario Orsini, and in today's video, we are going to review the KTM 890 Adventure R. A couple of things I need to touch on real quick. Number one, this is not a 2022 model. This is actually a 2021 model. Fear not, they're exactly the same for both years. It's becoming more and more difficult to get demo bikes uh, to go out and review. So huge thank you to Brian Holsenbake. He's one of our uh, subscribers, also one of our podcast supporters. He's been gracious enough to loan me out this low mileage bike to test out for you guys here on the channel. And I think he's going to loan me out another bike here soon too. So stay tuned. If you watched my most recent review video, you saw the Norden 901. They're difficult not to compare, but I'm gonna try not to compare them too much in this video. We'll probably have a comparison video later on. If you live in my general area, which is the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia, and you've got a bike you'd like to see featured here on the channel and help make uh, another subscriber's buying decision a little bit easier, shoot me an email. It's always down in the description below. One other thing I need to touch on, since this is a bike owned by someone else, it does have some aftermarket parts on it. I'll point those out as we go along throughout the video. So as I do with all of my review videos, we will start out with the specs, move on to the features, and then ultimately I'll give you my thoughts of what it's like to ride this bike before we wrap up. So we're going to start with the engine. This is an 889cc eight valve liquid cooled electronically fuel injected parallel twin making about 105 horsepower and about 74 foot pounds of torque it is ride by wire and it has three different ride modes standard that is street off-road and rain it also has the optional rally package you got to pay extra for that this bike has it and i'm glad it does and we'll get to that later moving on to the drivetrain we have a six speed cable actuated slipper clutch, six speed transmission cable actuated slipper clutch, going back to a final chain drive, also optional quick shift up and down. This bike has it, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Moving up to the front of the bike, specifically the suspension, we're gonna start with the fork. It's a 48 millimeter WP Explorer fork. Obviously you can tell it's an upside down fork. It is fully adjustable. It's got 240 millimeters of travel. Also up front, we have a non-adjustable steering damper mounted to the front. If we take a look at the front wheel, we have a 21 inch spoked rim. It does run tubeless tires and stock from the factory, it comes with Continental TKC 80 tires. Staying up front, let's take a look at the brakes. We have twin 320 millimeter floating rotors with four piston calipers. We've got stainless steel brake lines and just like we do on the rear, same thing on the front, we have Bosch 4.1 ABS along with cornering ABS. Let's move back to the back of the bike. We've got a WP Explorer shock, again, fully adjustable. Also the same 240 millimeters of travel. We also have an 18 inch rear wheel on the back. Again, spoke design with tubeless and once again, Continental TKC 80 tires from the factory. Staying on the back with the brakes, we've got a 260 millimeter rotor on the back. Again, stainless steel lines, ABS, cornering ABS, and it has a twin piston caliber. A couple of other key things I wanna to touch on before I get into the features. Number one, steel trellis frame, as you've become used to with KTM at this point. The seat height, and I'm sorry for jumping around between metric and you know whatever we use in the US. Uh, seat height. 34.6 inches, ground clearance 10.4 inches, fuel capacity 20 liters or 5.3 gallons, wet weight of the bike is in at 463 pounds, and then the maintenance intervals on this bike, the, uh, the, the, the smaller maintenance interval or the easier maintenance interval, basically oil changes at that point is uh, 9,300 miles or 15,000 kilometers. The big service interval where you need to check the valves, change the spark plugs, those sorts of things comes in at 30,000 kilometers or 18,600 miles. Those are the specs on this machine. Now let's hop into the features. Okay, so starting out here on the front of the bike, kind of like your cockpit area, you can see we do have a, uh, a power outlet centrally located right there. One of my favorite things about these middleweight bikes, they're still coming with keys. 
This is aftermarket right here. Now there is a spot there uh, to mount the GPS. He's already got the GPS mount in. This does not come with it. Also here on the front, this is aftermarket that's been added on. I've actually found this to be helpful. We'll talk about this later. So if we kick on the display, you can see we've got a TFT display on here with all sorts of information. You've got a couple of trip odometers. You've got your outside air temperature. You also have what ride mode you're in, what ABS mode you're in, what traction control mode, or not traction control mode, but if you're in, if you do have traction control turned off or on. Uh, everything is controlled over here by this uh, four button control panel here on the left, so easy to get to. If we hit the set button on the right, uh, there is KTM My Ride. I've done a video on that in the past. Uh, you've got your trip information. You have your ride mode right here. You can see we're in street mode right now. What's cool about rally mode is it gives you full adjustability. Do you see where this came up right here? We've got, let me get back out of there. We have a, nine different spots we can put this all the way down to nine or, you know, at this point, there we go. We can go all the way up to one. This adjusts our traction control. In all the other settings, whether it's rain or or um or street mode or whatever the case may be they're automatically adjusted for you this gives you full adjustability to uh, get as much or as little slip as you want come on down to motorcycle we can see we can adjust the traction control abs uh, we can put in off-road mode which will turn off the cornering abs as well as the abs on the rear wheel and then quick shift, you can turn that off or on, assuming you have that activated on the bike. So fairly easy to read. Uh, you got a big uh, speedometer on here. You can see your, your uh, tack pretty well. And then the, one of the weird things on these bikes is the fuel gauge doesn't kick on until it's half empty. So just be aware of that. While that may look full right now, it's actually about half full. So let's take a look at what else is up here on the cockpit. We come over here to the left hand side we obviously have our clutch now he has an aftermarket uh, clutch arm on here which makes this pull super super easy but this is what we're using to control our tft display we obviously have our turn signals here on down here we have our horn button and up here this kicks on your high beams this turns off your high beams and just puts it back on low beam and if you click it it'll flash the light for passing purposes. We also do have cruise control on the bike. Uh, it's relatively easy to set up. This is where your factory mirror would be. He did install the Rottweiler uh, mirror, bar and mirror holders on here. And I believe they're uh, CRG mirrors, they, they fold in. Nice set of mirrors, I actually had those on my 1290. If we come over here, Okay, so first off, this is an aftermarket bar riser on here, but that aside, you have 12 different mounting, I'm sorry, six different mounting positions for your handlebars. So if we look down in here, a little hard to see since we've got this aftermarket thing on, but we've got three different holes that, so we can go center, we can go a little bit further in, or we can go further out. These clamps are also adjustable with different offsets, so you can turn those around. That'll give you six different ways to mount your bars, not counting, you know, changing the bar or rolling them back. And I should say, this is a handlebar off of a KTM dirt bike. It's got a little bit less sweep coming back than what the factory bar had. Over here, we have our uh, start stop. Uh, also, we have our brake. And then obviously, we have our throttle. And that's about it here in the cockpit area. One other thing I want to point out use a key here for your fuel as well. I guess I forgot one thing up here in the cockpit area. You can see we've got our clickers. On this side, we're adjusting compression. And then on the right-hand fork, we are adjusting rebound. Also, by clicking these, we can also adjust preload. So once again, fully adjustable front fork. Dropping down here to the side of the bike, these are not the factory foot pegs. I'll put a picture of those up on there. But these actually drop down and just give you a little bit more leg room on the bike. Uh, pretty cool foot pegs, but just wanted you to be aware these are not the factory. If we take a look at the shock in here, we can see we've got our preload adjustability over here on the left, and I'll go around and show you on the other side. We have our, uh, we have our compression damping over here. Hopefully you guys can see that back there. One other thing I wanna point out over here, just like the Nord, and it has this beefy brake pedal. If you take these two screws out, you can actually flip this thing upside down and raise the uh, 
the brake pedal without actually having to adjust it. So, you know, totally personal preference, but you do have a nice beefy uh, brake pedal here so you can get your rear brake. Down here, these are our tank protectors. They're made of plastic, but everything I've heard, they hold up pretty well. We've got a plastic radiator guard, and then we have this 10 can skid plate that I'm sure a lot of people are probably going to want to upgrade with something a little bit beefier. And one thing that separates this, there's actually a lot of things, but one of the key things you're gonna notice aesthetically that separates this from the Norden 901 and the regular 890 Adventure is the high fender. And that's obviously designed for more off-road purposes. You don't have to worry about your brake calipers getting packed with mud in muddy conditions. But if you wanted to turn this into a little bit more of a touring machine, there is a low uh, fender kit you can get for it. Bolts on in about 10, 15 minutes. All right, so next up, we're gonna remove the seat. Now this is a one piece seat from the factory. There are some other seats available for it in the power parts catalog. I'll show you a couple things under the seat here. So first off, I mean, this is your air box right here. You've got easy access to your battery terminals right here. This is your, this is giving you everything that's on your uh, fuse block, so nice and easy to read. And while upside down, if you forget your suspension settings or the difference between at least the standard like street mode or standard mode or whatever, they have them printed here on the airbox, which I think is pretty cool. I've gone ahead and pulled out the toolkit to show you what's inside of here, and then I'll show you where it goes here in a second. So you can tell this one hasn't been used. We've got a, we've got an Allen key tool here. We've got a pair of pliers. We've got a 10 millimeter. I think one of these should probably be eight millimeter, 13 millimeter. This is also uh, to, um, this 27 here is to get your wheel axles off. And then over here, we've got a selection of both sockets and Torx bits, all the kind of the normal stuff that you're gonna have to take off of a KTM to, uh, to work on it. It might be difficult due to the shadows right now, but right back here we have our accessory wires, ACC1, ACC2. Two is the one that you'll hook onto if you only want things on while the switch is on, while one is the one you'll want to hook onto if you want power all the time. So whether you're hooking up heated gear or phone charger, whatever the case may be, they made it nice and easy by putting them there and making them easily accessible. So your tool kit, and I'm only going to take off the one side, can actually go into one of these side panels. There are a couple of metal tabs along with the rubber grommets that sit right behind here. You'll feel them pop out. And then be careful back here on the back because you're not actually going to pop it out. You're going to slide it off. And as you can see in here, we've got a little compartment that we can put the tool kit in if we want, or we can put additional tools or uh, just knickknacks in there. You see this little piece is gonna slide over here. And then once we have that back on, we are just gonna pop these back into place. Just kind of like, you know, if you've got a KTM dirt bike, the way your uh, air cover goes on for your air filter. All right, now that we've gone over the specs and features, you probably want to know what it's like to ride the bike. Fortunately, I got to hold on to this bike for a few weeks, got to ride it in all sorts of conditions, so I'm ready to share my thoughts. We're going to start with the Ergos. Obviously, I reviewed the Norden 901 recently. It's very similar to it. One of the main differences was that this one had some aftermarket pegs and bar risers on it, so it gave me a little bit more room on it than what the Norden had, but that's just because of the aftermarket parts. Very comfortable in both the stand-up position, which we'll get into when we talk about off-road, and also the seating position. One of the things I did notice pretty much immediately, I'm 5'10", 32-inch inseam. This does have a much higher seat height than some of the other adventure bikes, so I'm only able to get the balls of my feet on the ground, which is fine by me. I'm used to riding a dirt bike, and that's, that's the way it is on one of those. Speaking of seat, this is a very uncomfortable seat. If you're planning on using this as a touring bike, you're probably going to want to upgrade the seat. 
I've done multiple iron butt rides, and this is the first time my butts ever got sore, and it was after a less than 200 mile day. And that was even with a mix of on-road and off-road, so I wasn't sitting the entire time. So I uh, don't have many good things to say about the seat when it comes to comfort. The windscreen, uh, the windscreen does not provide a lot of wind protection if you're gonna be touring on the bike, but I will tell you that wind deflector that's on the front of it is a godsend. That thing is absolutely awesome. So if you want to maintain your stock windscreen and if you're going to be doing some touring, pop on one of those deflectors. Highly recommend that. That does help a lot. And I had almost no buffeting with that thing on there. So uh, engine, yeah, it's pretty much the same as, you know, the Norden. Uh, so I had a little bit of uh, time with that type of engine before. Power delivery is awesome. we got 105 horsepower. It's very smooth. Uh, you do have, I uh, mentioned this in, in the Norden video, you do have some less engine braking than you do with one of the big V-twin engines, but it's super smooth. Getting the power back to the rear wheel, we've got that quick shifter. Like I mentioned before on one of these uh, middleweight KTMs, I only like using the quick shifter when you're really revving the bike out. Otherwise, um, I, I don't use the quick shifter quite as much, especially around town, you know, lower RPMs, not hard acceleration clutch is uh, something I like to use still. Uh, speaking of clutch, we mentioned it's cable actuated, very smooth clutch pull in stock formation. This bike was outfitted with the Camel ADV Easy Pull or One Finger Clutch. That thing's pretty awesome and if you do pick up one of these bikes, definitely something worth looking into. Very small cost of entry on that upgrade and highly recommend that. Uh, exhaust note, you know, I usually keep stock exhaust on my bike, but this is not the best sounding bike. I know on Pete's we did the Acro slip-on. We also deleted the cat and did the mid-pipe. I would probably, if I was going to hold on to this bike, uh, get or pick up one of these bikes, get rid of the cat and put a mid-pipe on. See what that sounds like before dropping some serious coin on, on an Acro. Also, there is a significant weight savings, but you know, if you don't want to violate the EPA or if in your country you can't do it, it's fine the way it is. Slip on if you want some better sound, probably be pretty good. Uh, brakes, I mentioned this. These are basically the same brakes, except they say KTM on them instead of Husqvarna on, on the Norden. Excellent brakes. I mean, these things are very predictable. They bite really well. I'm, I'm totally impressed with the brake setup on the bike from the factory, with one exception. It is outfitted with the Bosch 9.1 ABS and cornering ABS, but on the newer 890s, you can do it on the 790, you can't do it on the 890, you can no longer fully deactivate the ABS. You can only put it in ABS off-road mode, which then gets rid of the cornering ABS and deactivates the ABS on the rear wheel, but you will still have the ABS activated on the front wheel. It'd be nice to be able to act deactivate it totally, but I will say, even with it in off-road mode, I did not notice the front ABS being intrusive or anything, but just something to be aware of. Handling, specific to on-road, like I said in some previous videos, KTM has a very neutral handling characteristic to it, meaning it's very linear on tip in and you know and pulling the bike back up upright. It's not a real fast tip in. It's not a slow tip in. It's just a very linear. Same thing on this bike. So very predictable. With the stock tires on it, the Continental TKC 80s. I know some of you guys love them. Some of you guys hate them. I think they're great tires, with one exception. That rear tire is not going to last very long. Typically, we're seeing. And it depends on how hard you're on the throttle. But, you know, 3,000, maybe 4,000 miles out of a rear. I know this bike's a little bit lighter, so it may last a little bit longer than what I've seen on some of the uh, 1090, 1190, 1290s. But they're not going to last long. But they are a good performing tire. They're pretty good on the street, and they're pretty good off-road. Uh, is there a better off-road uh, tire available? Yes, of course. Is there a better on-road tire, tire available? Yes, of course. But if you want a good split between the two for stock tires, really no complaints out of those. Off-road, this is what I really want to talk about because this is where we'll probably do a Comparo video at a later date with the Norden, but I really wanted to test the 890R off-road. So we got it on dirt, we got it on gravel, we did some creek crossings. It's been in a little bit of everything. And let me just start out by saying rally mode is a must-have if you're going to own this bike. Being able to put it over in rally mode and being able to adjust the traction control on a scale of 1 to 9 is awesome. I played with it 
in all different versions. I kind of found a happy medium for me. It was usually around a four or five setting, somewhere around there. But it all depends on conditions, riding, you know, your riding skill, those sorts of things. That is absolutely awesome. So definitely something you want to pay to have that turned on on the bike. Uh, it's also very easy when you're going from a paved section to an off-road section to flip-flop back and forth between the on-road and off-road ABS modes. I do recommend you know flipping it over to off-road ABS mode if you feel comfortable with that. Uh, it allows you to lock up that rear wheel a little bit. It's kind of fun to, uh, to slide this thing. Um, but uh, definitely easy to do. And also, if you don't want it in rally mode and you just want to go from street to off-road, very easy to do that as well, very quickly able to be done. You don't have to pull over anything. You can do it on the fly. Where this bike, to me, stands apart from probably the 890 Adventure, which I haven't ridden yet, but definitely the Norden. Nothing against the Norden. It did very well off-road when I rode it. But I'm a, you know, I've got a Husqvarna dirt bike with the Explorer front fork on it. Obviously, slightly different version on this because we've got dual calipers on the front. I've been a big fan of the Explorer fork. We got the Explorer shock on the back. That to me is a definite upgrade over the Apex that's on the Norden. Again, you know, the the Norden's fine with the 43 millimeter fork on the front, but this 48 millimeter Explorer, absolutely love it. What's cool is. You know, I messed around with my clickers a decent amount. I was able to find a very good setting that worked well for both on-road and off-road. Didn't have to mess with it. Now, if we were going to get into some more technical stuff, you know, maybe maybe I would uh, tune in a little bit further. But it was awesome just going from pavement to dirt and not having to mess with anything. The rear shock hooks up extremely well. Uh, very impressed with the suspension on the bike. And once again, like I mentioned in the Norden video, I'm able to lock my legs in on this thing when we're in the stand-up position and just feel kind of at one with the bike. I know that sounds a, a little yogi-ish, but no, feel very, very comfortable on it. Now, the one thing that I would probably look to upgrade is the steering stabilizer. You know, it's a non-adjustable kind of cheapo one they put on the front. This bike, which does have the bar risers on it, is set up. If you wanted to put a Scott steering damper on it, you could do that. Now, when I went through the creek crossing, stock stabilizer was just fine. But, you know, if you're going to be riding some more technical off-road or rocky areas or whatever the case may be, you may want to look into upgrading the stabilizer. But i got to tell you, this thing was an absolute blast to ride. It was fun on-road. It's nice and lightweight so far as, a, you know, 100-horsepower adventure bikes go off-road uh it's a very capable capable machine which is very very fun to ride again if you're going to be doing some touring on it you might want to look to get the uh the low fender kit for it so you don't catch as much wind with with the high front fender i never really got it above 80 miles an hour and i didn't really notice anything now you know if you're going to be riding faster than that you may have some ill handling effects catching some of that wind so I think that fender kit's fairly cheap if you wanted to flip-flop back and forth. And like I said at the beginning of the video, it's about a 10-15 minute job. It's just a handful of nuts and bolts and screws to put on there. So anyway, overall, I am very, very impressed with this motorcycle. As much as I like the Norden, and I think the Norden looks cooler, if I were going to buy one of these because I would want to predominantly use it for adventure riding and not as much touring, KTM made an awesome bike with the 890 Adventure R. So anyway, those are my thoughts on it. Does it have a few shortcomings? Obviously, overall, a great platform on which to uh, make a few upgrades and make the bike your own. So let's head back to the garage and wrap up this review video. All right, guys, so those are my thoughts on the KTM 890 Adventure R. Pretty awesome motorcycle. And if you're looking for some sort of middleweight adventure bike, this would be near the top of my list. Unless you're going off looks, then you might want to look at the Nord because my opinion, it looks better. Your opinion may be different. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, considering that subscribe button because if you like motorcycles, well, this is the place to be. If you have any additional questions about the bike, maybe something I didn't cover in enough detail, let me know down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. And as I say with every motorcycle, don't take my word for it. Try to go out and ride one yourself to see if you like it. And as always, talk to you again soon.